The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of Around the OAA, um, and one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells, and one of the hosts of Between Terramina and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and also watching on Oriented Television. Uh, happy New Year, Ian. Happy New Year, Sam. Mm-hmm. We're back. It is um, a bright, sunny uh, tenth here. Uh, it's still <laughs> windy. I don't understand why. I know. I'm just happy to see the sun. You know, we don't want gloom in the winter, right? We need some of that vitamin D to to lift our spirits. But right? the Lions won. That's what um, <laughs> that alarms people because now they lose number one pick. I it, this is. This is uh, history repeating itself. Because yeah. how many times have we seen this? They can't even win right. No, they okay. can't. And, and celebrating a win at the end of a season when it doesn't matter when the opponent has already clinched the top seed. This was me when they it's threw the— It's ridiculous. This was me when they threw the intercept— when, when Jordan Love threw the interception. <laughs> That's me. It's just, it's just one of those things that— well, the good thing, Sammy, right? Everything's right with the world. The Lions are doing what they always do. Yeah, I know. They, they win bad, they lose bad. Yeah, right. And um, with everything right with the world, there was a lot of action going on action in the OAA. Around, yep, around the OAA during the holidays. Of course, we didn't film last week. Um, yeah. But um, of course, if you want to take a look at the um classics and all the um stuff filmed before January third, um. We have our new sports ticker. Um, yes. Uh, so if you were watching um, on ONTV, uh, the replay of this uh, podcast, which we do have video. Some mm-hmm. of you might not even know that. Uh, and we run it on uh, Roku and you know uh, Amazon Fire and all that good stuff and video on demand and YouTube. So if you catch uh, OAA now with Sammy. Um, yes, we're going to be adding the new sports ticker to the bottom of the screen. Yep. Um, we were doing the sports, uh, the OA roundup. Right. Uh, with all the results, and they were starting to come in with so many results. We're like, hey, let's focus more on a couple of these games and really yeah. dig into them. Mm-hmm. And then everybody can still see the results of how they happen uh, rolling at the bottom. Of the mm-hmm. And I think that'd be a really uh, be an awesome experience. I mean, you see it on Sports Center. You know, yep. I mean, you see it on, you know, Fox, um, on Fox Sports. Like they sure. have a sports ticker, you know what I mean? Yep, everybody's used to everybody's it, but used we figure why not add one? Yeah, why not um, add one? Th- uh, we're going to be putting it in, and uh, hopefully that'll give you, you know, get everybody the details of what is going around on around the OAA, especially if we don't cover it. Like mm-hmm. we can at least have some results of, let's say, uh, cross country track, cross country uh, track, uh, track wrestling. And field, wrestling. You know, as long as we get the results in, we can mm-hmm. put them on the ticker and help everybody out. Yeah. So let's um look at our um the OAA roundup here. We're filming from. Last week's games, obviously. Um, some yeah. really good games around the docket around the league this week. So here is the OA Roundup All with right. our good friend, Ian Lott. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Sammy. Here's the Roundup. First one of the new year. And you're going to have to help me with some of these names, right? <laughs> One thing I do really well is I pronounce names really poorly. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's start with the girls, okay? There's a lot of action going on. And like Sammy said, we're going to start. Uh, They're in first... league play, too, which helps a lot. Yes. So we're going to be in uh, Janu- games that are in January. Mm-hmm. The uh, the last uh, series of games that were held in December before the holiday break and over the holiday break will be in the ticker. Yep. Okay, so on January 4th, we're talking about the girls here, action. Uh, Lake Orion, uh, 49-35 over Berkeley. Kylie Heck had 16 points. And Ryan uh, Palacek had 11 points for Lake Orion. Nolan uh, Malvey Malve, yep. uh, had 16 points. Ashley Loon had 12 for Berkeley. Oxford, 43-33 over Troy Athens. Ellie Musco had 13 points for Troy Athens. Rochester, 34-22 over Adams in a low-scoring affair. Uh, Farming, North Farmington, 61. Bloomfield Hills, 33. Stella Leffler had 22 points. Penelope Crary had 18 points for North Farmington. West Bloomfield, 80, 65 over Clarkston. Yep. Summer Davis had 31. Duckets, wow. India Davis had 15 points. Sydney Hendricks had 13 points for West Bloomfield. 
Matty Skrapuski had 25 points. Izzy Hadley had 28 points for Clarkson. Yep. So it looks like they've got the big two they're looking for. Who's they got to the find who's that one? big. Who's that big? You know, for Coach Aaron Goodenough. Absolutely. Stony Creek 49-18 over struggling Royal Oak. Mm-hmm. Uh, Troy, 55-34 over Southfield Arts and Tech. Still trying to find a rhythm in their offense. It's just hard to figure out. We're, I want to talk them in a minute. All right. Uh, where am I? Seaholm. Oh, looks like Troy, 55 Arts and Tech. We talked about that one. Seaholm, 53-8 over Ferndale. What? Farmington, he's just shaking his head. <laughs> Farmington, 62-19 over Oak Park. Oak Park's still struggling. Have no can't offense. Score. You know, they can't score. At Autumn Bartlett had 18 points. Uh, Yasmin, Yasmin Thorpe had 11 points. Uh, Brielle Burns had 10 points. Mary Blossom, 10 points for Farmington. Uh, Ferndale University, 58-27 over Pontiac. Good to see Pontiac back in action. Yes, and especially it's good for Ferndale University. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, both of them were out, both, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, Ferndale and Pontiac, not Ferndale U. Oh, not you. Okay. So uh, on the 7th of January, more games. Seaholm 61-41 over Farmington. Uh, Maggie Liebler, 15 points. Katie Sullivan had 11 for Birmingham Seaholm. Madeline Beckwith, 11 points for Farmington. Avondale, 36-25 over Ferndale. Yeah, Sammy's shaking his head again. Can't figure out Ferndale, hey? No, nah, Avondale's won. I can't figure out. <laughs> they won. Yeah, despite <laughs> them winning, I still can't figure them out. Really? Yeah. Okay, something to talk about. Lake Orion in action once again, 46-22 over North Farmington. Big win for the Dragons. Kylie Heck, 15 points. Taylor Dinda, Dinda. Uh, Dinda 10 points for Lake Orion. Uh, Troy Athens, 58-46 over Bloomfield Hills. Jillian uh, Siak had 22 points. 18 from the free throw line yep. for Troy Athens. That's crazy. Clarkston, 71-38 over a and Natty Skarpuski, 26 again. Izzy Hadley, 21 for Clarkston. We know where their scoring is coming from. Yep, from the guards. Groves, 42-36 over Troy. Sierra Rocco, 17 points for BG. 18 points. That game, Groves scored 18 in the fourth quarter against Troy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, Where are we at here? West Bloomfield, 61-36 over Stoney. Summer Davis had 21 points for West Bloomfield. Mia Carson had 11 points for Stony Creek. Royal Oak, 23-17 uh, over Pontiac Notre Dame Prep in a tight one. Regan Blackwell had 10 points for Royal Oak. That was a tight one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on the 8th, Rochester, 25-19 over Oxford. Alice Mack, 12 points for Rochester. Good to see the... Uh, all the athletes for Oxford uh, back in action. And that game was at Rochester University. So that was why that game was played on Saturday. Really? Yep. Okay. Uh, is that like a classic or a tournament? No, it was like an Oxford home, home game. game. That's right. Because mm-hmm. uh, their freshman JV and varsity girls all played there. And then the varsity boys, you know, played Lake Warren. That that's Saturday great. Night. Rochester University opened up their doors to give them a place to play. That's yes. fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to the boys. Here we go. January 3rd, only one game listed. Farmington, 46-33 over Port Huron. Uh, January 4th, Lake Warrior, 47-33 over Lapeer. Uh, Malachi Granberry had 21 points. Alden Ritt, 14 points for Lake Orion. Brendan Pillar, uh, 15 points for Lapeer. North Farmington, 45-43 over Clarkston in a tight one. Ryan Hurst, 29 points for North Farmington. Nate Stenman, 15 points for Clarkston. Rochester, 54-38 over Avondale. Uh, Avondale. Yeah. Even the guys are having trouble. Yeah. Uh, Bloomfield Hills, 62-32 over Warren Cousineau. Uh, Abramchik, 21 points. Carson Brodsky, 12 points for BH. Throws, 40-38 over Seaholm in a tight one. Seaholm's not good this year. They're not. They're not good this year. Tell me how you really think, Sam. Well, no, no. I'm being <laughs> honest with you. I've seen them. I've seen them play. You know, they're they're struggling, having a hard time. Harper, they're a young team, though. <laughs> Harper Woods, eighty to eighteen over Hamtramck Oak International Academy. That is a thumping. Yep. January fifth, Troy, forty-seven thirty-two over Oxford. Uh, Darius Whiteside and Zach Pinoza had ten points each for Troy. Logan Rosansky and Mitchell Viviano. Nine points each for Oxford. 
Stony Creek 44, 41 against Berkeley in a tight one. <laughs> Love uh, the meter. Evan Terrace, 24 points included. A game-winning three-pointer with less than a second for Stony Creek. <laughs> Mir... <laughs> oh, jeez. Mira Teradovich. Runovic, 14 points. Jacob Sheriff, 12 points for Berkeley. You got to love those buzzer beaters. At least as a fan, I know the players don't necessarily Not love for Coach Joe Sturm on the last two years, though. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh-huh. Uh, Royal Oak, 37-33 over Madison. Dylan Hoffman had 17 points. Jesse Huzzington had nine points for Royal Oak. I'm in a lot of trouble with that community over there at Royal Oak. What would you do now? I didn't do anything yet. Remember, I said football. Now the basketball is starting to roll a little bit. Okay. Well, you got to watch yourself. Uh, January 6th, Oak Park 61, 54 over Adams. Wanda Miller, uh, Wanda Miller and Ashton Henderson had 16 points each for OP. Uh, Thomas Blaine, 17 points. Justice Mims, 14 points. Gunnar Walters had 11 for Rochester Adams. Bloomfield Hills, 51, 42 over Detroit Loyola. Uh, Bramchick had 23 points for Boone. Uh, BH. Now we're finding certain names are turning no, up Adam over Chesh, and yep. over again, right? Yep. So uh, North Farmington, 62-40 over West Bloomfield. Uh, Landon Williams had 13. Hurst had 12. Hardy had 11 for North Farmington. Ferndale, 77-45 over Farmington. And Celine, 59-49 over Harper Woods. Yep. Harper Woods, uh, first year in the OAA. Yep. January 7th. More action. Clarkston, 44-29 over Troy. Steinman had 13 points. Wasilk had 11 points for Clarkston. Stony Creek, 38-35 over Avondale in another tight matchup. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rumler had 12 points for Stony Creek. Carlton Airport, 54-53 over Pontiac. That was an overtime. And a heartbreaker. That was an overtime, too. Good to see the uh, Phoenix up and running. Troy Athens, 50-49 over Ferndale University in a squeaker. Uh, with whom had 14 points, and Seabaugh had 13 points for Troy Athens. Royal Oak, 41-40 over Berkeley. A lot of close scores here in this uh, grouping here on the 7th. My goodness. Ossington, 13 points for Royal Oak. Uh, Sheriff had 22 points for Berkeley. Pontiac Notre Dame Prep, 58-36 over Rochester. Oak Park, 70 to 34 over Gross Point University Liggett. Uh, Henderson had 42 points for Oak Park in a showcase. Yep. January 8th, Lake Orion 45, Oxford 39 in a rivalry matchup. Uh, Morrow had 15 points. Uh, Ritt had 14 and Granberry 13 points for Lake Orion. Brown had 15 for Oxford. John Asciutto First game back for Oxford. Great to see that mm-hmm. young man back in action. Especially what he's had to go through. Absolutely. Uh, Ferndale, 85-47 over Davidson. And that is the Roundup. Oh, boy. A- and uh, just as a reminder, again, that the, the ticker at the bottom of the screen will be running the remainder of the scores. Um in, and in, also in, the highlights and the highlights, including uh, what I just read off. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of action going on since the two weeks we were off. Yeah, and, I mean, and a lot of interesting results. A lot of a lot of a lot of shockers. A lot of headlines. Obviously, I mean, obviously, you know, we got to look at. Um, there's some teams we got to really look at. Obviously, yeah. I know we talked Sea Home a little bit. I mean, like. Um, you know, that Groves Sea Home game, I just still cannot figure out Groves, especially <laughs> because, um, you know, Groves looks like at times they look very good, and then sometimes they play a level of their competition. So, and when they played Sea Home, Sea Home's really been struggling. I know they got a young team, they have one starter back, but still, I mean, like. Well, we were talking just before the holiday mm-hmm. break, right? It was. Mm-hmm. Um... The guys were just getting going. Right. right. I mean, they were like a week and a half in or two weeks in maybe. Right. And you don't know much about them. Right? No. We, 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 on paper, you can look at it and go, okay, so last year this is what they did. This is mm-hmm. what they should do. And you have this anticipation. Mm-hmm. And then we've been off for a couple of weeks and we've got a, we, we have a lot of resume here. Oh, yeah. To really see, like you I said, mean, who is rising to the top, who's kind of in the middle. There's a couple teams I'm really looking at in the boys' side that are rising. Um, even though the record doesn't show it, but 
I really, really like what Coach Josh Nix has done at Ferndale University. I mean, you look at Ferndale University, who's one of the small schools in the OA, and last season, that team did not win a game. Yeah. They did not win a game. And then Nix comes in there, has that team believe in what they've won two games, been really competitive in all five of their games. I mean, you look at what the Eagles have. I mean, now it helps when you have experience, but when you look at what the Eagles have done, I mean, clearly Josh Nix has done something over there. He has turned that program around. Yeah. He has, you know, Fernhill University could be a player in that gold division this year. I mean, that's, that's where I'm saying that's a team I'm watching very carefully. Another team, same division, Royal Oak. Royal Oak's a team that I have consistently bashed on air so many times. <laughs> yes. And I, whether it's from football, boys basketball, I mean, you look at Royal Oak. Dylan Hopman's been playing really well for them. Jesse Hosington has played really well for them. And for all their losses, you know, they've had some really, really heartbreaking losses. Madison Heights Bishop Foley was a very tough loss for them. And now you look at, they responded with some good wins. I mean, beating Berkeley, yeah, the team that's a, a, a upper in the upper division, that's a statement. I mean, like, now I know that Royal Oak and Berkeley, we know that rivalry. We know that that's a rivalry. The Battle of Catalpa, the Battle of Woodward. I mean, like, for them to go in there and win at Berkeley, that says a lot where Coach Aaron Smith has his team at right now. Um, I think for Royal Oak, you know, they are starting to put things together, and that's clearly a good sign for Coach Aaron Smith and his team. I mean, if they do, they could be a player in that blue. I mean, like, and the gold. I mean, you look at, obviously, the favorite in the gold right now is obviously Harper Woods. But they're off to a really slow start. Yes, they are. I mean, considering, yes, they got a new coach in Tawan Porter. Um, they had a really rough loss to Celine. They didn't look good early on in the year. Um, turned it around with two blowout wins. But we don't know what Harper Woods is yet. Yeah, we really no. don't know. And then when you look at that game against Celine, where they got out to a really tough start, 18-2 to two start, um, and, you know, that's going to be – that's almost impossible to come back from. Yeah, especially a quality club like Celine. I mean, they're going to put a a fight the whole way. There's If you get in a hole like that, it's very difficult. Yes. A, a, to any squad, regardless if it was Celine or not. Mm-hmm. And I think when you look at Celine – I mean, when you look at Harper Woods, I mean, like, you know, life in the re, life in the OA is much different from being in the Michigan Mega Conference. Yeah. And that's going to be – I think that's going to be Harper Woods' big challenge going forward. I mean, last year they had some struggles. This year it looks like they're having some struggles again this year yeah. on the boys' side of things. I mean, considering now you got – and then you have Pontiac who's coming off a really tough overtime loss. Um, Royal Oak I think is much better. Ferndale University is much better. Um, Avondale we don't know much yet. I mean, like, I know Coach Pat Clancy's team. Um, they blew a eight-point lead in the – in the um, end of the third against Stony Creek in that game. Um, Stony Creek came back, won that game. Um, so when I look at Avondale, they're a hard team to figure out. But when I clearly look at the gold right now, the gold much better than I, than I originally thought. I mean, originally, okay. yeah, they're much better than I originally thought. And then you look at on the blue case, I mean, the, the blue is probably the most interesting one. I mean, with Rochester, you might want to put that Notre Dame prep um, game away because of the um, – I know, I know they had a third of their team was out with COVID protocol. Oh, geez. And, and and we have to remember, this is still going on. I mean, look at you and I. We are sitting here with masks on. Right? Yeah, we're still wearing it, masks. Uh, we have a staff member out, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of staff members. So it's be safe, it's everybody. Still be safe, everybody. Be but this, is, but this is a, a big machine. You know, these teams, there's a lot of people involved. The coaches, the mm -hmm. families, all these players. And it's still out there, it's and out we're, there. we're seeing the results here on you know yeah. the, the wins and losses. I mean, Groves had to pull out of the motor of uh, the um, North Farm Farmington Holiday Extravaganza because of COVID. Yeah. Now, thankfully, you know, and then Farmington, same thing, and their girls they had to pull out. 
Now, thanks for 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 um for both teams. At least they had teams that could replace them. They shuffled their schedules around. Yeah. I mean, Southfield Arts and Tech came in in their girls' side and played that Northville Holiday Classic, and yet they got shellacked. I mean, you can see in the sports sticker. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. but you can, that'll be on the sports sticker. Um, but. But they got tested. They got better from it. You know what I mean? Playing those teams. Yeah. But when you really look at, I'm back to the blue here. Um, when you look at who I think is the second best team, people say, well, okay. I said before the season started, there were three teams to watch out for. In the blue. In the blue. Yeah. Berkeley, Troy Athens, and Oxford. Those are the three teams that I was keeping a really close eye on. Athens, I, I still don't un- know what this team looks like. I mean, yes, they got wins against Lake Orion and Ferndale University, but questionable losses to Port here on Northern. Um, you know, and, and Troy, I know Troy's been much better than people thought, um, but Athens has been a really weird team. I mean, Jonah Batardo there, you got, um, they still got concerns in the interior. Um, Jordan Shabaj is also still there. Um, and then of course you look at um and then you look at Berkeley. Berkeley, I thought, okay, was gonna clearly be the second best team in this league, but they had some tough losses. They just lost a heartbreaker to Stony Creek on a buzzer beater, and then they lose to your arch rival on their home floor, mm-hmm. you know, by one point. So I don't know where I'm looking at with Berkeley. And then there's and then there's Oxford. We know what they've been through. Oh yeah. I mean, we know that you know, they when they played Troy, they had that um, they had a really horrible shooting performance against them, and then against Lake Orion, they played pretty well despite losing by six. It's going to take them time to get it their is. feet under them. It right? is. I mean, uh, because they hadn't had any. Games. They've only played five games, right? So, it's it's. I think they'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Oxford, you know, they got a tough schedule coming up. They got a, They got they got two very tough games this week. Lumen Adam. It's Laney Arbor Prep on Monday, and then Livonia Clarenceville um, on Thursday. So when you really look at Oxford, I think Oxford might be the second best team in this division. And the reason why I say this is because you had the shooting in Alec Brown, Logan Rosansky. Um, I like um Mike. I like Jake. I like Champagne. He's a pretty. He's a very talented freshman. Um, and then you have Viviano, and then you have um, and then you have um, Bryce Esmond. So when you really look at Oxford, really good starting five. Question for them has been their bench. Mm. I mean, I know they got Botate that comes off the bench. Um, John Achuto coming back is a big, big deal for this team. Yes. Because not only what Achuto brings to the floor, you know what I mean? He brings energy. He's an athlete. I mean, like, what he brings... He brings energy, yeah. and that's what Oxford needs right now is positive, clear energy. And I think when you look at the teams that I think threaten Rochester in the blue, I think Oxford threatens them the most because, one, we know that emotion, and then, two, I think they match up pretty well with them. So yeah, when you look at the Wildcats, I think that's the team right now that's the second-best team in that division. Yeah, and like I mentioned, it's like we're – we're about a week away from seeing their true potential, don't you think? I mean, like getting sure. get the, getting that rhythm down, getting back in because they they were kind of behind that eight ball to no, no fault the of record, their own. Despite the record, this is a very dangerous team. Yes, absolutely. You know, despite the record, this is a and very you, dangerous and team. And you had the feeling that they're just going to get better and better. Oh, absolutely, especially so, with that experience they have with Viviano. You have Bryce Essman there. Yeah. I mean, like you know. So when I look at evaluating those teams in that division, I mean, I mean, obviously Rochester. Really stands out because of Matt Stone, um, but everybody else, you know, I've seen how Berkeley plays. I've seen how I'm not sold on A and T at all. See, home, those are the two bottom teams in yeah, that yeah. division right now. Um, and then, you, and then obviously, I would say right now with Rochester, Oxford, Berkeley, um, Troy, Athens, followed by Southfield, and then, um, and then. Um, See home. Okay. Has there been talk of Oxford going back home to play? So I, um, I know they're looking at getting them back in class. Or I mean, I mean, I think that 
is taking place, right? Yeah. Uh, are they going to go back home? Or are they going to be? I know they're going to the start road? practicing at at, at their the main school. gym. They're going to start practicing at at their um in the high school. They're going to start practicing there. Right. Um, I think that's a good that's a good start. Um, I think they're going to start having home games probably. Probably, um, and this is my best guess. I'm not going assumption or any, you yeah, know. Yeah. This is my best guess. It, don't be surprised they have start having home games by, I would say, the end of the month. Okay. I mean, like that's just my guess. That's not my um. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not spreading misinformation. No, or no, anything. no. It's yeah, and it's. I mean, it's a fluid situation. It's and still very fluid it, over it's there. It's a very personal decision mm-hmm. too. There's some kids, you know, just how they are dealing with what happened up there. Absolutely. I mean, and, like, you know, and absolutely. I mean, I know that school is still being um redone. You know what I mean? I mean, like, especially with what's been going on there, Um, you know, so it's going to take some time. I know they're yeah. going virtual this week. Yeah. Um, So, and I think that's a, that's a, that's a start. That's a good start. You well, know, in the, uh, they're in making the, building blocks. Yes. And in the realm of athletics for these guys, we were talking about this uh, prior to the break. And uh, trying to find out, you go, yes, they'll be on the road all the time. But you know they're going to have that support behind them. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I, I agree with you that this Oxford team could be very dangerous because um, they'll be road ready. Right. Right, because if you're on the road all the time, it doesn't, you know, it won't phase you. And I right? think playing a team like Arbor Prep is going to prepare them for a team like Grand Blank because who they're going to see in their district. because. Yeah. You look at what Grand Blank has, obviously R.J. Taylor, you know, so I think you're right. Being on the road, I think playing Arbor Prep will prepare them for playing a team like Grand Blank in their district. Yeah. So that'll be really something to keep a very close eye on. Absolutely. I mean, like, and then you look at that support, you know, if there's a school, if there's a school that needs sports right now as a healer, <laughs> it's Oxford. Yes. Because sports is the ultimate healer healer for for any school district because it shows you that pride it shows you that in oxford to me and sports is like a therapy session for them mm. right now and i think that's a great thing right now yeah I, I agree and being around your friends and mm-hmm. you know your teammates is there's nothing like it yes yep so let's go from, from the blue to the white okay um bloomfield hills clearly right now stands at the top of the top of the white right now with the way they've been playing um, Lake Orion's a really interesting team because let's not, this is a team that's been, you know, been just it, how, having some off season. So how did it start? Right. It started kind of like, Hey, there's anticipation of them being pretty good. Yeah. Anticipation being pretty good. Then you and get up to a, they were kind of, kind of like up and down, up can't and decide down, yep. who's what's going on. And then their coach leaves. And then their coach resigns. Yep. I mean, like, and then, um, you know, Joe Shorter stepped down before the Pontiac Notre Dame prep game. Um, if you want to take a look at that, it's on my uh, it's on the ONTV blog. I have a, have a post linked it on there. Um, yeah. It's also on my blog at um, Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um, because that that surprised me. I, I get a text and it says, uh, or where was it on the? Uh, it was on the ONTV page. I sent it to the. Um, yes, I know, but when I first heard that this was taking, it was place, on my prep zone. Yes. Uh, Cause I get the the news feed and mm-hmm. we're like, what? And mm-hmm. I'm surprised they didn't hear it from you first. Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> and mean, my like, prep was... zone scooped Sammy Taramina. How does that happen? <laughs> yeah, and then um, but yeah, so new coach in Jose Andrade. And what we know happened? What he, we know what he we know what he brings. He's very experienced. He's been very successful at Seahome. Yeah, very successful at Almont. Um, assistant at Stony Creek. Been around the OA. Very well respected. Yeah. Um. And it's funny because Lake Orient's three and one under Jose Andrade this year, and they they're three and one. They've responded. They've uh, responded. Yeah, I mean, like obviously, I think a lot of that's been the play of Malachi Granberry and DJ Morrow has really has they've really stood out. You know, besides Alden Ritt, because you know Alden Ritt's going to get a lot of attention there. And what did we say when they're up and down? There's really only two scores, right? And now it seems like they're starting to round into they're that starting offense. Starting to round that offense up. And then all of a sudden, they still got to find some interior play. I think that's the big problem I have with Lake Orion. Um, depth's been a big problem for them as well. So that's something that Coach um, Jose Andrade has to um, address, is going to be their depth. Um, when I look at Troy, um, Zach um, Padilla has been um, 
really been standing out. Um, I know they got Mason Parker in the weight in the wings, but both Whiteside brothers have been playing really good. Darius and then John. Um, we know Darius playing football. Mm -hmm. Um, John, of course, is a I think John to me is a better basketball player. Um, you know, I think he's gonna be really solid for them. Um and then you have um Groves. I, I, I can't figure this team out. I mean, Groves, you know what I mean? Just the way they've <laughs> yeah. been playing. Yeah. And then um Stony Creek, you know, they worked their tails off. Elliot Tavers has been a really outstanding player for them. Peyton Rumber coming back from an ACL injury, that says a lot. Um so when I look at Troy, so when I look at Stony Creek, you know, they work hard. They really, really work hard. Well, they, they always have, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's not unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, but will it yield results? That's the question. That's the big question. Um, and then let's look at, of course, the, um, the Red Division. People ask me about North Farmington. And, you know, could they get over that Clarkston hump? Yeah. And... Uh, I watched that Clarkson North Farmington game, and who was carrying it? It's going to be on Independence, but Clarkson was up. That was at Clarkson. No, that Clarkson. Clarkson was up forty-one to thirty in the middle of the in the middle of the fourth quarter. Middle of the fourth. Yeah, and he said, "Okay, Clarkson's going to win this game because they're going to be um, you know, they're going to go like because they're going to pull this game out." Ryan Hurst basically carried him in that game. He carried North Farmington in that game. Wow. And they came back from 11 down to stun Clarkston. That doesn't happen 45, in that gym. 45-43. That no. doesn't happen in that gym. It doesn't happen in that gym. And that's a huge win for Coach John Negotian. I mean, like, obviously, going into that place and winning there, that says a lot. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> to beat a team like that, I mean, like, and then Clarkston having a chance to win that game and all of a sudden, like, couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. And that was your game. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to have to hunt that down off Independence. You know what I'm thinking of doing, too, is with uh, our video post. We should have links to these games if they're on public access somewhere. Yeah. Just That's got an idea, Sammy. Something we should look at. We're yeah. going to share the games with the viewers. Yeah, we'll look into it. We'll look awesome. into it. Um, but, <laughs> but, yeah, that's one I would love to see because it, it, can North Farmington sustain that sort of grit? And that metal. Let's not forget, we know what Tom Negotian's team likes to do. They're a trap team, full court trap. Um, for them to win at that, especially with the big gym that Clarkson has, you know, it's really hard for them to play that full court trap. Now, people at Ferndale are going to say, well, wait a minute here. What about us here? What about us? I mean, Ferndale, you know, they played a vicious schedule. They're playing some really good teams. Mm -hmm. Um... They've been playing outstanding teams. And you really look at what Ferndale's done. I mean, you know, Travion Lewis. I mean, Jason Drake coming back from a personal matter. Um, Chris Williams has been really been playing outstanding. I mean, Ferndale, you know, they're ready to make a deep, deep postseason run again like they did last year. Mm -hmm. Where they won, um, where they won, um, where they went to the state semifinals. So, in Division Two, So, I think Ferndale's starting to get ready for that for that deep postseason run that they are used to c having. So that'll be really interesting to see what Coach Juan Rickman has. Yeah. Um, now going against North Farmington, I think that's going to be really interesting. I think it's next week when they play. Um, that'll be a good game is between. It, isn't it exciting? Right, like right now, it really mm -hmm. is exciting because this is the meat. Yeah. Of the season. Yes. I mean, this is the nitty gritty. Yes. Uh, league games. Mm -hmm. Just coming at you left and right, two, sometimes three a week, depending mm -hmm. on the yeah, scheduling, depending on the right? scheduling, yeah. But this is the meat of the schedule. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, I mean, think of the changes we're going to see over the next two weeks. I yes. Mean, there will be even changes. Even a week. Even, even a in week. the next week. This is, we could talk about all of this stuff right now, and it could completely yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, but that's the glory of the season, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's why we're fans, and that's why it works out so well. We, a team that really is. so who do you got? A team that really hasn't given me given any respect to we haven't given yes. is Oak Park. I mean, here's a team that sits five and one. They have a superstar in Ashton Henderson. They have Juana Miller. Guy can can score. Yeah, he can score anywhere. He had forty two against um he had forty two points against um 
in a game. I mean, you go like, I, what? I mean, a high school game. You think, what are the quarters in a high school game? What are the Eight men and four Eight. quarters. Right? That's not a lot of time. No. Uh, it, you just have to be pouring it in. Right. Uh, sometimes it's the opponent. Right. But we've seen him score in bunches. He can score in bunches. Regardless of who they're playing. Yeah, and now we're going to know a lot about them when they play Clarkston So on Friday, on Thursday, so that'll be really can interesting. Can he drop 40 on Clarkston? If he does, wow, that would be a huge eye-opener. If he drops 40 on Clarkston, I just say, you know what? Just I will give him. Get I will, hand him to Mr. Basketball he'll be, he'll be in the Mr. Basketball <laughs> conversation if he gets oh, 40 against Clarkson. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, Clarkson, as defensive sophisticated as they are, you know what I mean? I mean, and then you look at Adams. I mean, Adams, they're coming off a tough loss to Oak Park. Yes. Um, for them, it's like meeting the grind of the red. You know what I mean? <laughs> Welcome to the red for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, they got the players, but, you know, when you have some tough losses, you know, you still haven't played Clarkson yet. You haven't played North Farmington yet. I mean, you just got swallowed by Ferndale. Yes. Um, so if you're Coach Jared Thomas, you know, you're in a really difficult spot. And... You know, I know when I'm watching that Oak Park game where Gunnar Walters, he did have 11 points, but he got teed up in that game. Uh-oh. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on is how Adams responds in the red division. I mean, that's how they respond. How they would respond. Yeah. Um, West Bloomfield and Farmington are both struggling this year. Um, Farmington especially. Um West Bloomfield's coming off. I mean, like, they just got to find, they just need Mitchell State to step up more for West Bloomfield, for Coach Arnett Jordan to turn that thing around. So yeah. that is the boys' basketball stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's recap. There's that. a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't got girls' basketball yet. No, and we're at uh, 37. Ooh, so we got some <laughs> girls. Yep. So let's got to break well, this down. Well, let's do some highlights. Like, um, I don't know if we're going to have enough time to get through. A mm-hmm. detailed analysis like we just did with the guys. Mm-hmm. But if you were going to take, let's say, top two from each, and we're going to break them down. Like, you can p- pick two teams from each division. For the girls. One, one that's on the rise and one that, or, and one that you're going. Now, it helps is the Blues got three. Is pick the, two. Um, this league's got three divisions. So, let's go three. Okay. Um, if, if we can get them the in, blue, let's do it. The Blue, let's go. Obviously, Harper Woods is the leader of the pack right now. But Seaholm's the one I'm really keeping a close eye on. Um, Seaholm, the play of Shea Manchester, Maggie Liebler, they got balance. I mean, okay. they got balance. I really like what Coach Chris Manchester's done with that team. Um, to me, in my honest opinion, Harper Woods has not been tested yet. Besides, the only team that's really given them tests is Farmington. So they still haven't really passed my eyeball test as of yet. Okay. Um, Fernil University, they're three and zero. But they really haven't passed the eyeball test at all either. So, you know, but if I had to do my top, and then Farmington's another one. I mean, like, obviously with Anna Barrett, you got, they, they got multiple pieces over there for Coach Laura Guzman. So when I look at my top three, and I think this is a little bold here. Hey, home if you're not bold, you're not Sammy. home right now, I think it's the best team in the blue. Okay. Followed by... I, I haven't seen Harper Woods yet with the eyeball test. I can't really trust them. Um, nor is Ferndale University. Um, Farmington, I would probably say, actually, Harper Woods would be our number two team right now. And then Farmington would be my third team. I, I can't trust Ferndale U right now with the schedule they played. Um, so those are my three teams in the blue. Okay. Um, Avenue, I can't trust. Um, Pontiac, Young, uh-huh. um, Ferndale's young. I mean, Oak yeah. Park can't score. There's a, I mean, there's a yeah. Those that grouping there is just kind of yeah. It's kind of rough. They'll fight amongst themselves, yep. but uh, they're not going to make any noise at the top of the not right now standing. No. Yeah. Um, the whites the most interesting because how many teams in the whites? There are eight teams. Um, clearly to me the team there's it's there's two clear teams right now for sure. And that is Rochester and Lake Orion. Those are two teams that are on a collision course. Yeah. Lake Orion, I think, is the better of the two teams. I think they're more well rounded because you look at the balance of Chloe Wiegers, Maddie Ebert, Kylie Heck, um, Taylor Dinda, um, Olivia Pebloski. Um, they're starting to put real points on the board. Yeah. 
And right. I mean, we're not talking in the 30s. We're talking 50s and 60s. They're 40s and 50s, and that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yes. And then you look at Rochester, obviously Alice Mack, you know, that bit, they're big six-foot freshmen. And the fact that they beat Oxford with only without four players who went on vacation. What? And that's scary. Rochester kids went on vacation? Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. Um, so when you look at <laughs> when you look at those are clearly the two teams yeah. that stand out. Yeah. And do we know when they are going to meet up? I mean, when's the first match? That'll probably standing? be I think it'll be in a two weeks. Okay. So that'll be really interesting. I mean, it's to be at Lake Orion first, and then um, they would go back, and then they would play Rochester to close out the season. So when I look at the white, I mean, it's clear to me Lake Orion and Rochester are the two best teams. Yeah. Um, Oxford, with them, what happened to them was Peyton Richter got hurt, hurt her ACL, done for the year. Oh, no. Um, now, Nevada Wood, their freshman um, standout, has to play um, in the post. Allison Huffstead is another one. They're going to have to rely a lot on Miranda Winnepco to carry him. Um, it's tough sledding right now for Coach Rachel Bryant and her team. Really tough sledding. Um, Athens, we know they got that experience with SEAC. Um, Tempco, um, you know, and then um, North. They're just a complete different team without Sella Leffler because she did not play in that Lake Orion game with an ankle injury. Um, and then you look at Bloopia Hills, they're struggling. Um, you know, and then um, Adams, we know that they've been up and down. I mean, like, so. So you think there's, I mean, clear two. The clear two the are Lake Orion and Rochester. And then everybody else is fighting it out. Oxford and Athens are probably like the next two down. You know, then it's North, then it's North Farmington, Adams, um, then Bloomfield Hills. So really, those are the t- and Berkeley. You know, I mean, forgot to mention Berkeley. Yeah. Berkeley, Berkeley, middle of that pack behind North Farmington, um, because they. I mean, Noah Malby's really been standing out for them, but to help with Ashley Loon and all that, but they just got to find more options. Yeah. Um. So for Coach Cody Faulkner, obviously. So. We'll see what happens there, but right now the clear top two in the um in the white are Lake Orion and Rochester. Um and it's clear. Yeah. Um the red, this is where it gets interesting. West Bloomfield <laughs> is on another level. The the <laughs> offense of output with this team mm-hmm. is crazy. Yeah. It's insane. S- some both Davis sisters, both Hendrick sisters. Pouring it in. And then you have Mayana Hooper. That's insane. And they're posting crazy statistics. And then you look at West Bloomfield. People say to me, is this team a state title contender? I didn't believe it at first because here's why I did. I, because, yeah, Birmingham Marion's going to be in your district and Farm Tales Mercy is going to be in your district. Yes. So what happened there was Birmingham Marion's starting to lose a little bit. They lost to Dearborn Divine Child, and then they lost to Farm Tales Mercy. So I'm saying, ooh, wait a minute here. Could this be, could West Bloomfield have a chance here? Yeah. Especially because you have both Davis sisters, you have both Hendrick sisters, both, and then Myona Hooper. I mean, Summer Davis has probably had the best week I've ever seen in, a, in a girls' long, basketball player. 52 time. points yeah. in two games. Yeah. Against two very good teams. Two yeah, very this, good teams. These aren't some cupcakes that you no. lined up uh, just over the break no. to get some uh, get some uh, game action experience. No, these are these real are teams. these are your two other two top teams in the red division with Clarkston and um, Stony Creek. Yeah, and, a front loaded schedule for West Bloomfield, and they did that well against it's, those two teams. It's just looking like the, will they just chew up the rest of the red? I you think know? they're going to chew them up. I really do. I mean, like, with the play of Davis, both Davises, Hendrick sisters, Hooper. I mean, Coach Darren McAllister's got that team loaded. He's clearly got that team loaded. Yeah. And you look at, obviously, the – um. and then you look at Stony Creek. They're going to be fine. I mean, I'm not worried about Stony right now. 
with both the Prairies, Carson, Demidroff, um, and then obviously with Clarkson with Sikorsky and Hadley. I mean, my question for Clarkson is going to be is, can they find that third scorer to compensate both Hadley and Sikorsky, especially how good they've been playing lately? Yeah. Um, Troy, Troy's been hard to figure out because here's why Troy's been hard to figure out. <laughs> The Alyssa Mantuza injury, we talked about that. Yeah, that yeah. is Huge. killing him right now. Yeah. I mean, relying a lot on Shara Tobaka and Kendall Zyder. Um Names we've been talking about mm-hmm. forever. Groves, obviously, you know, Groves is off to a six and two start. Caitlin Sanders has been playing really well. Sierra Racco has been playing well. They made some changes since that Lake Lorian disaster for them. Um I mean, they've stayed the course. Um, Coach Allison Heidi's figured this team out, um, and they're starting to win games. And, you know, you look at that, that's a recipe for success, you know, for Groves. Um, and then you look at, obviously, um, talk Stoney, talk Troy, um, you know, and then you look at Royal Oak. They're struggling this year. I mean, yeah. they, they don't have a lot of scoring right now. I mean, they did pick up a good win against Notre Dame Prep, um, which is a huge win for them. Um... So when you look at the red right now, it's my two top team, three top teams right now: West Bloomfield, Clarks, and Stony Creek. In that order. In that order. Yeah, I agree. And Clarkson and Stony Creek play each other on um Friday night, and that'll be really interesting. Like we said, there's a the meat of the schedule. Mm-hmm. A lot of interesting games coming up, and it's going to determine what the heck's going on here. Absolutely, and you really look at West Bloomfield. To me, it's the cream of the crop right now in the OA. Yeah, there's just something about them. Um, the consistency. I mean, you know, there's not uh, – we we have some teams where you see different leading scorers and it kind of bounces around. But this is – this, like you said, it's another level. Um, and I followed the Davis sisters playing. in their career, even in middle school. I followed their – you know, they've been getting – they've been scoring in bunches. I know the AAU program they play. Um and you look at this team, and you gotta you gotta basically compare them now to who they're gonna have to deal with in the postseason. You know they're gonna have to go through Birmingham, Mary, and the Farm to Hills Mercy. You know, and they get there. There's a possibility they could clash with Heartland, uh, maybe Midland Dow. I think Midland Dow is in Heartland's number. I mean, like even though Heartland, we know they have those. We know they got um, Amanda Roach on that team. We know they got Whitney. They got um, They got the younger Solemn sister. Um, you know, but people look at Heartland and say, well, Heartland could be this next great dynasty team. I'm not sold on Heartland. I really am not. Um, I mean, like, and I think that proved to me with them was, was Midland Dow. Now, if I put Heartland against the West Bloomfield team, that one, that'd be really good entertainment. <laughs> That'll be really good entertainment. And I'll dare and I'll dare say this. I think West Bloomfield is a much better team than Heartland. Because I've heard so much hype about Heartland. Now they haven't met up in some sort of uh tournament. They or have like played that. in districts um a couple years ago, but that was well before the Davis sisters got there. Yeah, yeah. So um, you're trying to find it's different than like it's like in volleyball. We see these teams meet each other mm-hmm. all over the place multiple times that are out of your league and in sure. your districts and things. Mm-hmm. But you don't really see that type of crossover in basketball unless you specifically unless you schedule. Unless tournaments, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, but I, I would dare say this on air. I think West Boop is better than Hartland. Um, now, Hudsonville, a lot of people say they're state champions. They're defending state champions. You know what I mean? So I just think at the end of the day here, um, it's one at a time for Coach West, for Coach Jerry McAllister yes. and the Lakers. Yeah. Um, I think the Red is a very difficult league. I mean, I mean because you got Clarkson, Stony Creek, you got Groves in there, you have um Troy in there, and then you have um Royal Oak who can who can scare some people. Yeah. And then I forgot to talk Ante. I was gonna talk to them before the show started, <laughs> and. It's hard for me to it's, describe Coach Decree Coltrane's team with the way it – Yeah. It's, how do I explain uh, this? It, it, I, it, but this – isn't this kind of the – how long have they been in the red? They've been in the red a long time. Right. And 
what did they also have for a very long they time? They had a legendary coach in Michelle Marshall. And players. And players. That match. They still got players on that team, but. Something that is not Something clicking. is not clicking, especially against good teams, where they look really good against really bad teams, blew them out, and then when they play good teams, they're the ones that get blown out. Yeah. So how does that explain? How do you explain them? It, you can't. You can't explain anti because yeah. here's a team that's got they got all this young talent, you know, up and coming talent. But when you're playing good teams, they're getting blown out. Yeah, <laughs> I was really happy for them that they took Farmington's spot in the Northville Holiday Classic. Really happy for them. Now the unfortunate thing for them was they got blown out in two both games. So it's one of those. I, it's so hard to see because we're so used to. Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, they're going to bring it. Uh, a proud program who has so, had so much success. Mm-hmm. But but this is we've seen this happen. You know, the ebb and flow, the up and downs of certain teams. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's their turn. I, I guess it's their turn. But when I look at this A and T team, I can't figure this. How do team they work out. their way out of it? I mean, that's. Is- That's a question I, I, I can't answer because I don't know. <laughs> because, and I'm not being mean to you, Now, I've said things where how teams can work themselves out of this. Yeah, yeah. But with this team, I don't know if there's a way out. The big question mark. The big question mark. For me, if it was my opinion, and I know, I think it's for later in the year. I mean, I think it's for the end of the year, you know. For them to get their confidence back up, you know what I mean? For them to... Because when you're in the red division and you're going through a rebuild like they're going through. Yeah, it's it, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard in, in the red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, now, if, if you were in the like in the lower division, like the white or the blue, you know, you could definitely do that and work your way back up. Yeah. And, we you know? just, and we've seen the shuffling of the divisions where you have teams that had so much success. They move up and then they, they graduated all their talent. And they come down. And they just get drilled, and then you're there a little bit. I think this they... is where Southfield is right now with the program. I think this is where Royal Oak is with the program right now. I think Royal Oak right now is taking a lot of lumps. They are taking a lot of lumps because of they lost a lot of talent last year. Now, I felt bad for them senior their seniors last year because they couldn't play in the postseason tournament because of COVID protocol. Yeah. And... You look at this Royal Oak team. They're taking a lot of lumps right now. But I think in the next few years, I think they'll be back. And I know Coach Brian Sapata very well. I mean, that win against Notre Dame Prep is huge for them. It's huge for them. Despite the fact that they held, it was a low-scoring game. And it was 23-17. I mean... That's going to be that's a positive start for Coach Chapata and his team. So Royal Oak, to me, I think they got more of an upside. A and T, it's hard for me to figure them out. It's hard for me to figure them out. <laughs> Whereas with Troy, I know their problem. Groves, Groves is starting to put it together since that Lake Orion disaster. Um, Stony Creek, Troy, I'm um, Stony Creek, Clarkson. We know they're up in the echelon there. Yeah, and then um, West Bloomfield, cream of the crop. In the right. Yeah. Do you th- do you think at this point West Bloomfield is just a matter of just getting through the season because uh, they're that far ahead of everybody else? I think for them it is. Their losses will be self inflicted, or do you think there are some teams that can nip at their toes and? Their make- only loss to Dexter was a really questionable head scratcher. Um. Other than that, if they lose, it'll probably be self inflicted wounds. But maybe, maybe not, because they still got to go to Clarkson. They still got to yeah, go yeah. to Stony Creek. Um, that's going to be really difficult so those games are the, for Those them. are the answers that you're looking for to mm-hmm. say, yes, this is legit, and you can start looking ahead to going, mm-hmm. yes, they could be contenders. I think, to me, West Bloomfield is a state contender because I think when you look at Heartland, um, people look at Heartland, people look at Midland Dow, um, to be at the echelon um, – that's really important, you know, for them because now people are going to say what's West Bloomfield's weakness? Size. 
obviously. I mean, they're not a big team. Um, but they're quick. They got scores. They have multiple scores anywhere. You know, this is not a one-trick team. Now, people would say about Heartland, they're not a one-trick team. So when I look at... When I look at... Do you if, think Heartland is the main obstacle? For West Bloomfield? Yeah. Yes. I mean, people ask me if it's Birmingham Marion. Um, I said, no, I don't think it is. I think West... I think Heartland is because... Obviously, with who the players they got on that team there, obviously, I think Summer Davis is a better player than Amanda Roach. Um, I think that, um, I think that, um, and I think if West Point played Heartland right now, it'd be a hell of a game. Yeah. I would take West Bluefield because of the guard matchup. Because I think Summer Davis is a better player than Amanda Roach. That's how, that's how much I okay. believe. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, he said it. Yep, I said it on here, <laughs> you know, and you know, I said it on here, and I know, and I know Roach is a North Dakota commit, ah, but I, I, I dare say this on here. What? Um, mm-hmm. okay. So with that being said, rounding out the girls, mm-hmm. guys, we got a lot to digest here, all of us listeners too. What key games are we looking at this week? We're at 56. So. Stony Creek, Clarkson, and the girls I'm looking at really carefully. Um, that's going to be a really good game because can Stony Creek, I mean, can both the Prairie sisters defend Sikorsky and Hadley? That's, a, that's what I'm keeping a really close eye on. Um, other games I'm keeping a close eye on. Um, for sure, you got the white. Gold crossover in the boys. Um, probably the best matchup of that that could be upset trap related is Fernell University and Groves. Mm. I'm keeping a really close eye on that matchup. Um, I think Lake Orion Harper Woods is another one to keep a really close eye on with Lake Orion having to travel down to Harper Woods. Mm. Um, and then you look yeah, at... Yeah, that's the first trip down there. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. And then Friday, keep an eye on Clarkson at Oak Park because... Can Ashton Henderson go off? Um, remember last year's game where Oak Park beat Clarkston with Keegan with Silic, um did not play in that game, though. So I'm curious to see how Oak Park does in that game against Clarkston with a he- full, healthy Clarkston team Same, in that yes. game. Yeah. So those awesome. are games I'm really keeping a close eye on. Cool. And, and then you have the um, MLK Classic this weekend. North Farmington taking on um, Davison. Um, so that would be an interesting out of area game, yeah. right? So the the rare one that you see of quality teams mm-hmm. going against each other outside league. Yes, that'll be really interesting to keep a really close eye on going forward there. Awesome. Um final thoughts here. Um stay healthy, everybody, please. You know what I mean? I mean, we know cases are going up. You yes. know, we started to see um limits and spectators, obviously, um, with multiple schools, especially south of M fifty nine. Um, if he can't make it out of the games, we have live streams, of course. ON TV, there's I know, always, has. There's always a way to watch that game. Always a way to watch games. I mean, like, so it's very important to stay healthy, you know, get your vaccine shots if you need, if you hit, I mean, like, um, get that boost, get that booster too, you know what I mean? I mean, like, make sure everybody stays healthy. Absolutely. And Sammy, I want to share something real quick before we get out of here. And I'm just going to start the tune. Is that OAA Now is the top podcast. On our on ONTV's uh, SoundCloud account really? for all of last year. Really? Most viewers, most activity of everything. So congratulations, Sammy, hey. on your podcast success. So Thank you. Yep. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, everybody, and see you on next week, everybody. God see bless you. all. See you, Sam. Mm-hmm. Boy and Al is produced by Sammy Caramino. The views on this show are his and mine alone. Again, it is a new year, but we are still training people to make their own podcast. Give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060. We have a sports ticker now. And a, yeah, don't forget the sports ticker. That's it for all right now. We'll see you next week. See ya!